everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it is time to leave no dye behind. I have some acid dyes mixed with citric acid powder in Dharma True Turquoise in the acid dye collection, and then Dharma Peach, what peach blush. I keep wanting to call it Creamy Peach because that's the name of this very similar color in Wilton's food coloring, but if I say Creamy Peach and I'm using acid dyes, I'm referring to Peach Blush. So the True Turquoise is way more pigmented than the Peach Blush. I can't remember when I mixed these up for the Chemnitz Color Challenge Part 1 that came out a while ago. I can't remember if I use, what proportions I used of dye to citric acid or anything, but I'm going to use these up today on a single skein of Nitpicks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% superwash merino wool, and it does speckle beautifully. Not quite as sharply as something with a little bit more twist, but you can get some really pretty speckles. Not that I'm necessarily going for speckles, we're sort of going to set this up in a dye pot add some vinegar, and then see whatever happens. We are only dyeing 100 grams of yarn today, and I'm adding, well, I guess I added about six cups of plain tap water. Sometimes you can start off adding a little bit more liquid, especially if your yarn is still dry, then you might if the yarn was already pre-soaked because we know the yarn is going to absorb a lot of this liquid. I think if the yarn was pre-soaked, maybe I would have started with three or four cups of water, but that's because the yarn itself is already saturated. So with the six cups, it's not going to be super low immersion, and I don't care if it's perfectly saturated. We're just pressing and looking for large dry patches. Uh, in general, this base does soak up water pretty quickly. If you do want more even coverage though, I recommend that you pre-soak for a good 20 to 30 minutes. The dyes are already mixed with citric acid, but let's still go ahead and add two tablespoons of white vinegar to our dye bath. Uh, just so that way we have acid in here already. If I want reduced spread with speckles when I'm dyeing low immersion, I want most of the yarn to be above the surface of the water. And I would say we're gonna get a lot of spread here, but that's sort of what I want. Uh, I imagine it's gonna end up extremely blue. The peach will probably not have much impact, but let's go put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves and start dyeing. I don't have much of a plan here besides seeing what these colors want to do. And here is some of our creamy, it's not creamy peach, it's peach blush. And it is sticking to my fingers. I will probably tap it, but you can see that that is not very pigmented at all. Meanwhile, our turquoise, it's gonna pack more of a punch. How big of a punch it is, is really gonna depend a lot on if I diluted it a lot more with the citric acid powder than I did the peach. But I am going all over, and it takes a moment for it to sink in so you can see it, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> a ton about the coverage. We're just going for all over. And I am getting a fair amount on my fingers. Uh, so now I'm gonna come in and sort of tap this in. Uh, and I will then go, therefore go and tap a few other areas uh, just for some consistency. The only thing I'm really making an effort about is to try to have my fingers be as dry as possible when I go back into the dye. And now I'm coming in heavier with the peach. We will flip it in a moment. I'm going to give a little bit of time for things to set, but the turquoise color uh, does not strike very quickly. So we will end up likely with a overall pastel blue base then with these speckles kind of all over. So again I have some of my fingers and I'm just sort of tapping it in uh, to get the color off of my hands. Now 
let's, well, before we flip, I'll zoom you in. Both colors do give nice speckles, but you can see that we definitely have a halo. And if I move it, uh, the peach is striking a bit faster, but we definitely have a halo of these colors. Uh, and I mean, that's okay. I just wanted to have fun and I really like the combo. The dye bath is not that warm yet. It, I would call it warm and oh, it's pretty much everything is struck pretty well. I mean, the true turquoise the, can take a while. It definitely needs heat, but we can get things nice and spread out. If you'd like to learn more about any of the tools or equipment I use for dyeing yarn, I do have affiliate links down in the video description. So I like where this is headed, and my goal today is to use up as much of this dye as I can. And by as much of the dye, I mean I would like to use it all. That's sort of my goal, uh, because I want to, I have limited space to store leftover powders and dye stocks, and so sometimes I like to go through and clear out what I have. So I've got most of it on the yarn. There's a little bit left, but I'm sort of as I'm tapping, going more towards the ties. Again, I don't mind if we have a lot of white left behind. That is something that I think is completely okay. But I just want to have something fun with these two colors. I still plan to give this peach blush its moment. I think I want to do a peach blush colorway with some blue and purple speckles on it because I feel like that's a colorway I regret not really giving as much of a moment. Okay, I have a tiny bit of peach left. I'm also going to hold that. I regret not having like more uh, having that moment. I wanted to do it after part one and then I didn't end up doing it with part two. It's really easy to get decent coverage that you're satisfied with when you are only dyeing 100 grams of yarn. It can feel, I think, harder uh, to get coverage when you are dealing with more um, but actually, I think that this is pretty. I think what I'm going to do is actually add liquid to these two containers now. And I mean, the difference, like if I, when I combine them, like it makes the blue a little bit more turquoise, but not a lot. So I think what I'm going to do now is add this blue to the pan. Still not that warm. Stir it up. And then slowly, I'm almost dip dyeing. Use. It's getting a little bit warmer. It may not all strike, but I am intentionally giving it about half of the skein to get more of that blue. Just to add a little bit more tonal variation to this. And so now when I come back in, you can see that we've got an area that has more of a light blue backdrop and then an area with less, but there's still just like randomness and the peach definitely does come through. So. I'm now going to heat this for 20 minutes and then we'll come back. It's been 20 minutes and the color had pretty much all bound before the time started anyway, which is good. <laughs> we might still see some bleeding because as I mentioned, this color is tricky, but I'm gonna turn off the heat and let the yarn cool so then we can wash it. I think that this colorway can serve as a nice reminder that uh, some colors are just much more more pigmented than others. Like going into this, I knew that the turquoise would make a bigger impact, but I couldn't remember, and I'm not seeing any bleeding. Uh, I couldn't remember if I tried compensating 
just adding some dish soap. Compensating for the fact that the uh, peach blush is much more pastel than the true turquoise. And if I had tried to use more of that pigment in with the citric acid versus the blue or not. But either way, I think this is a fun yarn and I think that those little hints of peach will be show up really, really nicely in whatever this yarn turns into. So, woohoo, no color bleeding. All right, I am going to go ahead and uh, rinse, finish rinsing the soap out of this yarn. I'll put it through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is our skein of DK Weight 100% Superwash Merino yarn that we dyed with leftover Derma True Turquoise and Peach Blush mixed with citric acid powder. And the dominant color is extraordinarily obvious here. <laughs> I really like the subtle difference between a real pastel blue and then a more medium sky blue from at the end where we really slowly dipped it into that extra blue color. Even with the turquoise being our dominant color here, the peach still makes an impact. Just a very subtle one. I think using so little of the true turquoise worked really well in that we didn't have a lot of washing to do with this yarn. But sometimes that color, like there's just something that crashes out of solution or just doesn't all bind. It's just not as easy. And I've heard that even though it is um, in the acid dye line, it might not be an acid dye pigment that is in this color. So maybe that's a reason why it is a little bit tricky. And so in case I did not mention this earlier, I like the, I don't know if Jacquard's is also called true turquoise, but I like that turquoise from Jacquard better. I found it easier to work with and color wise, it's very similar. So it's just a handy reminder that you can use different brands of acid dyes as you're playing with color. And sometimes there might be some that you like better from one brand than another that have very similar overall color to them. What makes one of my videos a leave no dye behind video versus a dye pop weekly video? Sometimes it's a lot easier to make that determination. Something I would call leave no dye behind when I have clear leftovers from another project Sometimes I don't know the concentration or remember exactly what colors went into it. And a lot of these videos are more fast paced to use up leftover color that I have on hand. But sometimes when I have leftovers of dye powder mixed with citric acid, especially those might be dye pot weekly episodes because I have a more vision and planned way to use it. So I think that overall, when I'm going into something for leave no dye behind, I am really aiming for something that is really done by feel, seeing how those colors interact together and attempting to use up leftovers. So there are some videos in Dye Pot Weekly that technically also fit this leave no dye behind definition. So sometimes I'm like, oh, this video could be either one or the other. <laughs> But either way, you want to make sure that you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. Tuesday mornings are always going to be a new Dye Pot Weekly episode. And then Friday mornings are either another Dye Pot Weekly or a Leave No Dye Behind or some other kind of bonus video. And we have so much fun. If you love watching me dye yarn and want to help support the channel on another level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Chemnitz patrons can get early access to the Dye Pot PS series, and there's other cool perks. You can find more information through the link down in the video description. I really enjoy dyeing with dry dye powders. Whether I am going for something that is very speckled and sort of subtle, not subtle, whether I'm going for something that is very speckled and I want to avoid color spread, or like today when I have more water to let these colors spread out a little bit more. I think that it's just fun to use the same type of technique, but then see what kind of variations you can get just based on that water level. But I also really enjoy sometimes just saying, okay, I've got this powder, this is where my water level is, and now let's see what these colors want to become. It's a really, really fun way to dye yarn. It's just sometimes these skeins end up being fairly one of a kind and would be hard to 
replicate, especially if you don't know the anything about the proportions or what colors you used. Today we knew the colors, so that could help. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.